I did a video not that long ago showing you how CPUs have built-in protection when it comes to power draw, current, and temperature, and all that sort of stuff. Well, they'll shut down to protect themselves rather than melting to death. Well, I figured, why not have your monitor go to sleep while you're doing a video? No, I figured, well, why don't we go and kind of carry that over into our next segment, which is showing you just how much fail-safe is built into your graphics cards so you guys can feel more confident trying to squeeze more performance out of overclocking it without the fear of breaking it. Hey, you got something you think looks cool, but you really wish it looked better? Well, don't fear because Fantex is here with their new neon LED light strips. The Fantex neon LED strips feature smooth and diffused lighting for a more natural and old school look. Multiple mounting options allow for smooth bends through their use of strip guides complete with screw and adhesive mounting options. Their high quality full color digital adjustable RGB chips are compatible with most popular RGB software. To learn more and see the full compatibility list, head to the link in the description below. Now see, doesn't that look so much better? First caveat though, although I'm fairly confident no one's gonna really break their GPUs by following this guide, if you do break your GPU, that's on you. All risks are assumed by you and you're responsible for said risks. Now moving forward, now that the lawyers are happy. The 2080 Super that we're using here is an EVGA variant. So this is a Founders PCB, uh, which I, I really is reference PCB, but the Founders is also a reference PCB, um, but with their double fan cooler on it. So it's not like, a crazy overbuilt VRM system. It's not beefier parts than you would find from the original design of the 2080. It is just a different cooler. So with that out of the way, I don't want people to be like, well, you're using a you know, graphics card with better parts. This is gonna apply to anybody, whether it be AMD or Nvidia. Now, the only software we're gonna be using here is two pieces of free software that you can use to start tuning your GPU. But when it comes to finding stabilities, you obviously need to test it in all your games and all your software. Um, and as soon as you're crash free in everything that you do, then you're considered stable. This is just like the first step. Um, we're using MSI Afterburner. It's an EVGA card, so this one you could also use Precision uh, from EVGA, and you could use Precision also with any NVIDIA graphics card. Um, you can use MSI Afterburner also with AMD though. And we're using Heaven Benchmark. I know a lot of people always are like, why are you using Heaven? That's DX11. Because what we're doing right now is we're testing heat and CUDA performance. And that's just another way of stress testing the card. As soon as somebody comes out with some sort of an RTX loop like this, you can bet your ass we'll use it. But for now, that doesn't exist. All my settings are maxed out. This is a 480, or 480p, wow. This is a 4K panel. That's however many 480p's fit into 4K is how many this one has. Now, the reason why I'm using a 4K panel for this is obviously it's four times the resolution of uh, 1080p, and that makes it four times harder. No, it's, it's actually probably a lot harder to run than four times harder. Uh, but we got everything cranked up. We've got anti-aliasing at 8x. We've got our tessellation at extreme. You probably won't be able to see it very well because the text is not blowing up properly because of scaling and stupid windows. But anyway, um, tessellation is extreme, anti-aliasing 4x, quality ultra, and then preset custom. It's running at system resolution and it's not full screen. That way we could switch back and forth between uh, here. So first things first, we need to get our baseline. We need to know, I, I just want to kind of see what the temperatures are going to max out at on their own with the factory fan curve. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to turn off the fans entirely. And we're gonna crank the power limit and we're gonna crank the temperature limit. So we're gonna let it do is draw all the power it wants without giving it the cooling. And that's gonna be the first thing to show you guys because I think what a lot of people are concerned about is damaging their graphics cards from too much heat. Now all graphics cards, whether it be AMD or Nvidia, have temperature limits built in and temperature targets. Those are two different things. All you're able to actually see in MSI Afterburner, which is what's uh, considered modifiable in the VBIOS. Now the VBIOS tells us what our minimum fan speed can be, what our maximum fan speed can be, our maximum power draw, or TDP, or total package, uh, or total power draw. But how far your card's gonna go, how much power it's gonna draw, and all that's gonna be dependent on a few variables. Obviously, what's the temperature at, and what's the current power limit at, and that'll tell you how much power you know, it's gonna be able to actually start drawing. Now, this particular card has probably already gotten to its maximum temperatures. Um, we're in an open-air test bench, obviously. But it looks like a 67C is where we're at right now. This is why I do windowed mode, so I can actually take a look at what's happening here. So we're at 67C, our fan maxed out at 49. That's as fast as this fan's gonna go. 50% is as fast as the factory fan curve will go. And that's what starts to give us our biggest limits. So now let's say you're playing with your card and you're like, okay, I wanna give it more power, I'm really concerned. You'll notice the power limit and the temp limit are synced. 
So 116%, so 16 extra percent of power draw, and then we increase our temperature limit because remember, power is heat. We need to be able to uh, account for that. Let's go ahead and let this run for a few minutes now and see how hot it'll get. But you'll notice it won't really go any higher than about 50%. It says 51 right now, but let's see where that go ahead. Go ahead and max it out. I'm ready for the weekend. Is anyone else? <laughs> Now you guys might be wondering, Jay, why do you explain this every single time? I've got videos explaining how MSI Afterburner works and what all these knobs and dials do, but the problem is nobody ever goes back and watches those videos. So I have to at least explain it to some degree so that if you're watching this video, you can at least follow along. I hate when you watch a tutorial and it's like, make sure you watch my other five so you can understand what I'm talking about in this one. So it looks like our temperature is maxed out, about 69. We haven't seen 70 yet. 53 is where we went on the fan speed. But here's what we're gonna do now. We are just gonna go ahead and we are going to see how much we can truly impact this. Oh, I don't want 1,000, nope, 100. <laughs> and memory clock, 500. I almost tried to overclock it by a whole gigahertz. That'd be awesome, but it's not possible, not with this coin setup. Anyway, um, but we're also gonna take our fan speed ticket out of auto and drop it all the way down to the minimum, which is 25. Now, this is a zero RPM fan, and what that, or graphics card, and what that means is under its automatic fan control, when the car does not under load, it will reduce the fans to zero. That way there's no noise, zero dB. But when you go manual, they don't want you to do what we're doing now, which is where we're trying to overheat the card. So it at least makes it run at a minimum of 25%. That way there's some airflow over the, air, the fins and the heat pipes. But look how fast the temperatures are rising. In that quick explanation, I have, the temperatures have increased just that much, right? And what's gonna happen now is the temperatures are gonna climb all the way to 88. Now what I started to say earlier is when it comes to fail safes, your graphics card has two figures built into it when it comes to temperatures. There's the target. Remember, this is a target. It says temp limit, but it's really a target. What we're saying is let the graphics card get to 88 degrees before you start pulling back clocks and voltage. So it's gonna pull, once it, once it hits 88, it's gonna start pulling back clocks and voltage. That way uh, it can try and reduce the temperatures. And it will continue to do that. Let's say I took a blowtorch and started pointing it out there. I took a heat gun and I'm pointing it at the graphics card. Hey, that's a good idea. I should point the heat gun at it. You can point the heat gun at the graphics card to create more heat. As the temp comes up, it will do what it needs to do to reduce the temperatures. That, or at least to keep the temperatures at 88, that way it doesn't die. Now it's gonna have a fail safe in there where if it reaches a certain temperature limit, and I don't know what that is on this card. I wanna say maybe 95. If it reaches 95 degrees, it will shut off. And that's what people will start noticing with their graphics cards when the fans go bad, or they're not spinning properly, or the bearings are worn out, so they're going extremely slow. Is the graphics, or even the thermal paste is bad. The graphics card, you'll be playing a game and then suddenly your whole computer just shuts off. Now there's a lot of reasons that can happen. It doesn't mean if that's happened to you that your graphics card is going bad in terms of fans or thermal paste, but it's one reason. But see, here we are. We are at 88C now. Look what's happened to our core clock now. You can see right now, this is just bouncing all over the place. And what I think is impressive in terms of protecting itself is just how quickly these micro adjustments to clock speed, we're moving about four bins here. A bin is about every 15 megahertz when it comes to the new NVIDIA um, BIOS. And so you can see this bouncing just all over the place. Our core clocks are not really dropping that far. It did hit 89 for a second. What you'll notice is when it hits 89, which is above that 88, and it's only for a split second, that is when that drops all the way down to the 1875, is what I'm saying. Now the behavior that you're seeing right here is what led to a lot of articles over the last few years uh, since GPU boost has been a thing where people will confuse boost bins with thermal throttling. And that's something that's always been extremely annoying. In fact, there was even a whole bunch of Reddit posts against me saying that I was defending Nvidia because I was like, it's not thermal throttling, it's simply boost binning. We are still at 88C. While it's now trying to protect itself by moving bins are above the promised frequency for GPU Boost 3.0. Believe it or not, but the fans are running at 25% and it's sitting at 88C. We are getting more performance out of this than you're promised with the card because GPU Boost 3.0, like I said, as long as there's temperature limit and there is power limit, it will go farther than the numbers that are printed on the box. That is the way GP Boost works. So as you can see right here, it is aggressively adjusting its clock to keep the temperature hovering at 88C. And one of the reasons why the clock adjusts, it's, it's not so much adjusting the clock as much as it's adjusting voltage. And voltage and clock are directly correlated. They are tied together. It's the same reason why as your graphics card gets warmer, uh, you'll, you'll notice the clock starts to step down one bin at a time. 
because it's got a it's got a logic built into it that says at this frequency and at this you know temperature this is you know where it roughly should be and it does that specifically to keep the temperatures under control now watch if i reduce this temp limit down to like let's say 770 the fan has not ramped up because we locked it but our temperature is still sitting at about 88 c now if we had 70 set as our temperature limit it would have done what you're seeing here this behavior at 70 c so i'm going to put this at right around the middle i don't want to melt the card so yeah 1650 1590. So that's thermal throttling. That's that's, we are different. thermal throttling now. It is locked at 88. I'm blowing hot air on it. Now look at the clocks. Oh my goodness, that's hot. Can you hit triple digits? There oh, it is. Jeez. That was when I took the heat gun off the card for a second yeah. right there. And that right now is when I was like pointing it away for a second because I don't want to melt it. So you see how quickly it can adjust? 300, there it is. That's your... I don't think it can go any lower. I think that's base. That is, that's like absolute emergency. It's base. still getting 33 FPS in 4K. Now I want to, I want to show you something here. I am, I've got this thing overclocked. Well, not at the moment. I'm holding a heat gun at a 2080 running 4K with the fans locked at 25% and it's still running. Now you can see this hasn't let me do anything that would break the card. What would happen here is if I had the core clock cranked too hard and then the, the Gravis card crashes, then what will happen is um, it'll, you know, it'll just lock up on you. I suggest not clicking the startup button right there though, which is, means it'll apply the overclock when Windows starts. Because if you go too far and then it locks up and that's enabled and it's, it, say it crashes even in the desktop, then what you have to do is you have to boot into safe mode and then uninstall Afterburner and then reboot the system and it will boot up just fine. I've, I've had people be thinking they broke their card because they overclocked it too far. They actually clicked a thousand or something like I did and then that's checked. And then every time they boot up Windows, it just immediately crashes again. Go into safe mode, uninstall Afterburner or just even go into the file where Afterburner saved in your documents and delete the, uh, the profile for the card and it will boot up just fine. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you guys the impressive nature of how well coolers work today versus like even back like the Fermi era where they were known as hair dryers because they were so hot and so loud. Watch this, I'm gonna turn the heat gun off. I'm gonna crank, I'm gonna leave everything where it's at. I'm gonna crank our fan speed to 100% and keep an eye on the temperature. So right away, you might notice the temperatures seem untouched, really, versus, you know, having the fans plugged in. Again, because it's a zero dB fan, so they don't normally run at idle anyway. It's 88, 89. But we're way lower than we were. That, that 25% was making a legit difference. Oh, wow, we're already down to the base lot. But it's still staying at 88 because as long as there's clock for it to drop, it has temperature it can, it can shed. There is 300. So now theoretically we should see the temps start to climb slowly. What? <laughs> it was all, oh yeah, I got this. Ugh. I'm just trying to help it. I didn't think it was gonna stop at 88. I mean, we're at 300 megahertz, right? But. <laughs> I'm cooling it with a heat gun. <laughs> this is the equivalent of when you drain all the oil out of your engine and see how long it will go. And then it just keeps going and you're like, what the heck? Not that I've ever done that. Oh, look at the FPS now. Oh my God. <laughs> so it's clearly 98. All, all right, 98 degrees is where it said, no more. It, it went. It tapped out at 98. It might be 98 degrees on all of the... Ah! But it's hot! Touch the end of the heat pipe. No, I just watched you do it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn it back on now and just let it cool off. So if this video served any purpose, it should be that the video is going to come back on. It's going to be just fine. It took us unplugging the fans and pointing a heat gun at it to get it to turn off. But it turned off because it protected itself, as you can see right here. Look at the temps already. Oh, hey. fast those come down. Back in business. EVGA knows how to build a cooler. So fans are at factory curve right now, but you can see they're speeding up, fans are running, 64C. And then I can even max it out. And that will pretty much stop the climb of temperature at 100%.
All right, there you go. Complete the graphics card. You're not gonna break them unless you do something really stupid like take a hammer or maybe a heat gun to it.